All right, guys, I need you to go ahead and excuse this mess in the background right here. We're gonna ignore that. <laughs> so first of all, this tumbler that I'm doing right here is different than the one with the lid, with the glittered lid. Um, I was really in my head when I was filming that, um, when I was videoing that, I had more of a TikTok in mind for that. And I would have had to do it with a whole voiceover. And I know voiceovers are fine, but I don't know, I really like being able to explain things to you guys and to sit there and do a voiceover. Um, I feel like I wouldn't have been able to explain it kind of in real time. So I'm doing this part on a different tumbler just so you guys can see um, kind of how I work this part all together. So I'm starting out with just regular craft paints. Look guys, I know that they have flow paints. I know. I know that they have paint, uh, paint pour kits that you can get. Um, I don't have any. I, um, I just do it this way. So I use um, regular acrylic paints. It's these big jugs, flow acrylic, and I add water to it. And I get these from Michaels. I have this little water bottle that I poked a hole in. Um, I don't even know how long ago. So I just keep poking holes um, and refilling that <laughs> as I use that bottle. This is just white paint that I'm mixing in and I'm looking to get kind of a certain consistency. You want it to run off of your tumbler. This right here, that's too drippy. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do a little more. We're gonna add more water to that. I just need to make sure I have enough paint too. The really good thing about watering, oops, watering my paints down is that, I need a better hole in there, <laughs> is that uh, whenever I have some of this left over, I just dump it back into the white. As long as this doesn't get any other colors into it, I dump it right back into that, um, the white paint thing. All the paint kind of, and the water separates, and I have to shake it real good to mix it up sometimes, so it doesn't hurt the paint. I don't use that paint for anything else besides just pouring it, so uh, that works for me. So I'm gonna get this, like I said, to where I want it, I do like to brighten this color up sometimes. Um, and what I'll do is they have um, these like metallic ones and it brings a really nice brightness into the paint. Uh, I probably isn't the best idea that I do grab some of the more expensive paints to throw into here because you can get this look done either way. But I don't know, it really gives something different. So we're gonna add a little of that in there. And just mix it up till we get it where we want it. Definitely make sure it's mixed up all the way. And if you're at the bottom of your bucket of paint or it's an old paint, maybe try not to use that because I have noticed that once you get towards the bottom, you get all these little um, clumps of paint through there. I'm not quite a fan of that. I'm gonna mix this some more. I usually make the biggest mess when I do this. Okay, so that's about right. And this is kind of the part that I wouldn't have been able to explain um, and really show you guys on a voiceover. That one's starting to pump a little difficult. I must have a clog coming up. This is gonna blow up on me. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> If this comes shooting out at me right now, guys, like, uh, laugh with me, not at me, please, because I can feel it. I feel it starting to pump weird. Um, these pump bottles, whenever they do get clogged up, it's really easy. Like, you just get something, you pull it out, and it usually just comes right, back, right out. This um, must be a little further down, though, because it's a little... It's gonna blow up on me. <laughs> it's gonna blow up on me and I'm gonna die. Okay, let's just go with that. I think it's coming to the front. I can feel it when I'm pumping. Um, watch, I'm gonna get it on the next round. The next tumbler I use, I'm gonna get it out of there. I'm gonna forget that it was clogged. All right, so put a little more water in it. Mix this really, really good. Whenever you're mixing the gold, it kind of has like a bit of chunk look to it but mix through that. Like keep whipping it around and it will thin out. And I don't really know the ratio that I'm using for this. Um, I just know what I need it to look like. 
somewhat like that. Like it's a little more, a little more than that would be good. I'm gonna get a little more paint because I don't want to run out. Uh oh. That just pushed through weird. I wonder if that clump landed in here. Did not. All right. Just tried to pump my water bottle for a second. All right, we're gonna pour this. I mean, keep mixing this. I add a little more water. And then we'll mix through the blacks. I really love, this is perfect, look at this. Like that's perfect, you can see how it comes out. That's a really good consistency for this. That's how I like it at least. And then I'm gonna use black. So I'm out of really good blacks. So what I'm doing is I have this, um, this Dollar Store, I got this from Dollar Tree. I got this Dollar Tree black paint. And this is what I had left over from last time I did that other tumbler. So we're gonna use some of that. And as long as it doesn't get dirty, we'll just um, pour it back into that little bottle. Whatever I do, whenever I'm using um, kind of a funkier paint, I take the good stuff. Um, Cause this stuff is insane. It is really good. There's definitely a difference with this black paint. This is 3.0, it's the blackest black. That paint is legit. It is amazing. Um, definitely a little too expensive to use it for this part, but um, I don't know. The end result is what I like. So we're going to go with this for right now. Mix this up. Definitely where I should be using gloves because I'm telling you how messy I get is crazy. And like I said, it's always good to have a little extra paint. So it doesn't matter if you mix too much. As long as your colors don't really um, get into these other buckets, you can save it. I should wear gloves for this part. This is when I get, like my nails get all nasty and I'm apologizing to you guys. Um, it's just a mess. All right. Okay, so this is how I do this part. I know a lot of people put them all in one cup and um, mix them all around. I don't do that for this design. The whole point of this for me is to keep all of those colors separate so it doesn't get too muddy. Um, we will have to drag some paint along. To, I just put black paint all over my face. <laughs> um, we will have to drop, uh, drag some black paint along to help it, um, you know, kind of coat the whole tumbler. But we'll worry about that as we get there and then we can cover that back up again. So we're gonna go around and drop that color. I need to move this a little more to the center. We're gonna drop this one. Don't use all your paint right now. We need a lot of paint for this, so don't use it all right now. Try to go heavier into some of these areas that, um, that don't have paint. And then what I like to do is scoop it from where it's falling and kind of drop it down there. Like I said, we will have to take some of this and kind of muddy it up. So I'm just using a trash spoon right now. I'm kind of helping these colors go. Kind of dropping them in between to help close up the gaps of some of that color. All of this will be covered up. So even if it gets a little muddy right here, I'm not completely worried about it. So get this, keep dropping it in between the sections. I'm gonna blow some of this top paint down so it isn't gathered right there too much. We're 
we're gonna take some of these and we're gonna add the colors in the middle of the tumbler. Like go towards the top, some of the areas that don't have it, drop it there and encourage it to work down a new section. This paint will want, will want to run where the paint has already been instead of taking its own path, but just kind of encourage it. Drop it in one section and encourage it down to a new spot. If you just tap the cup ahead of where that paint's gonna go, it's gonna give you a whole new section to run on. So drop it down and like I said, kind of give it a new path to take. This black will take over. So if you're, um, if you don't want, you know, a lot of black on your tumbler, be careful because it definitely will end up taking over the design. So we put the black on, we're going to go through with the white and we're going to do the same thing. See how it turned like that spot right there didn't have any paint on it. So it didn't want to take that route. It kind of did its own thing. If you see a spot right there where it's built up, if you just tap it, you will encourage the paint that's right there to keep running down. Kind of force it to go the way you want it to. So it's kind of, it ends up giving that, um, kind of the paint pour feel, but with a brush stroke look to it, since it's, um, you know, just thin drops of color. And then we'll go in with the gold and drop that on in parts. We'll focus on this bottom of the tumbler where the paint needs to drip and then we'll kind of go from there. Drop them halfway through. Well, I said that and then I go like way up high, just drop it. <laughs> where it doesn't have any paint, that's where you wanna put these colors. And then depending on if this is um, kind of a guy's tumbler or a girl's, you can go through, because this is a dirty pour method that I use for, um, for guys' tumblers too for this, especially when you have some of those colors that um, don't look good mixed. Like if you were to do kind of like an LSU vibe, uh, those colors don't like each other. It goes to like this weird brown color. Uh, it doesn't look good. All right, I'm gonna take a clean popsicle stick and try to encourage those other sections to close in. And then we can start adding paint and really making this outside design how we want it. Try to just get that to go down. And then we'll go through and find all these sections that don't have paint yet and close those in. Each one of these will come out um, completely different which is one of the things I really like about it. Keep dropping that, let me smush that in. This cup is leaning. All right, so I'm gonna go through, find some of these sections that the paint didn't wanna hit. You can see right here, there's a big old spot. And then there's a part on that other side that needs white really bad. So we'll go in with the white. The cup that I used um, under here, I've used a lot. And you can tell by the way it's leaning. Like I just have paint built up all in it. So I'm gonna put this down. Trying to do this at an angle that's good for you guys, but that I can also see and it's a little tough. All right, we're gonna drop some gold in here. And then I will take this, uh, these cups and kind of drop some more on top in sections and let that run. The one thing you definitely do want to make sure is that all of these paints, um, all the sections of the tumbler is covered up. So I can 
turn it this way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to drop, I'm dropping paint kind of in there and I'm letting it, making it make sense where it kind of goes, um, like it combines together so that it's not just a drip of white really out the blue, like it's kind of tying into something. And that's too muddy, so I will add some more color up in here. And the other thing is that I noticed that if you turn your, um, whatever you're dropping it with, like for me, the popsicle stick, if you turn it sideways, you get a nicer thin line than if you were to just drop it, you know, straight on. I'm going to bring that up and kind of tie it in as if it looks like it came from that drip right there. And then that will keep running down. All right, we'll go on again with some paints over top. I want to add much more black because I don't want that black to be completely taken over. Give it a good bit of gold through there because there's nothing right there that kind of screams gold. So drop some more in the middle of the cup. drop that in the middle and then I'm going to bring it up to the front and kind of tap higher so that it kind of plays off where that drip is coming from. Like I said, I don't like when it kind of looks like it's right out the blue. I mean, it's fine if it's a lot more streaky, but I really want it to make sense um, to where it kind of came from somewhere. And I think one of the really cool things about this design is that you can't quite tell where the pour came from. Like by the time it's done, you can't tell if you did a dirty pour from the top or bottom because it looks like that from both angles. And I don't know, it gives it a really neat look. Give it a bit more gold. kind of go through and see where more color needs to be added. And from here on out, it's just playing with it and getting it to look how you want. Um, like I said, I kind of like when it has, where you really can't tell where those drips are coming from, like which direction it was poured from the top or bottom. So like I'll drop it there and then I'll wedge it sideways so that it kind of fits into a spot. Any of these spots that look a little, um, a little too mixed up, like the paint's mixed too much, I kind of like to get those out of there by just dropping more paint um, midway through the tumbler somewhere and then let that kind of run in a section and clear out the rest of that paint that's sitting there. Hopefully this is making sense. All right, so that has a pretty neat look so far. I'm gonna do a little more white And bring it up from the bottom and then, like I said, tie it in at the top. Uh, this will be a really good spot to show. So right there, they have some white. So I'm going to put a good drip here and let it go down, but make sure that end piece kind of ties in higher. Like I said, the rest of this is just kind of playing with it and getting it to look how you want. Um, there's definitely no uh, wrong way to do this tumbler. It's just how you want the paints to fall. And like I said, I like when they're all sectioned off and they don't mix a ton. 
if you want this to do, if you're going to go for kind of colors that really won't um, look good when they mix, kind of like that purple and yellow, go ahead and do white all over your cup first and then drop your colors one at a time. That way it won't mix. Um, it kind of has that white that will pull it down. Look how cool that little drip came out. Like it kind of just goes off into nowhere. Okay, so that's how I did the other tumbler. We're gonna let this dry. The paint that we use, this black that we put in, all of that black will be super, super dark. I would go with more white and gold, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this one into kind of like a guy's tumbler and go on um, kind of that Saints vibe. So I'm not gonna do too much as far as paints. I've noticed that the times I've sent out um, tumblers that had more of the black in it, uh, the guys really, really liked as opposed to like the whites and golds. Um, I kind of let the black take over that gold look instead of um, all the whites. So that's where we're going to leave this. It's going to continue to drip. Um, this won't even be the final result of what this cup will look like. All these paints have to keep running off of it, but that's kind of how you do to um, drop the paints in different sections and drop them halfway through your tumbler to get, you know, like that look of not really being able to tell where it was poured from. Um, so that's it for this part of the design. Um, there's a chance I usually visit this cup in like 20 minutes and, um, and see if there's any other sections that I want to add like drips of paint to to get it kind of keeping that look of, um, of like the, you know, random colors kind of just popping out of nowhere. Um, it all just depends on how it goes as this starts to sit for a little bit. Um, but like I said, with it being well, kind of a, a guy's design that I'll leave for this, there's a good chance I'll just leave it like this. But that's how um, the other tumbler was done, is just dropping your paints one color on at a time and then filling in your gaps with your different colors, just placing it wherever you want. So um, that's um, all for this one. Like I said, different cup. And then um, the next part, um, I have to do a voiceover because I was, like I said, really in my head when I did that cup. I'm not quite sure if it would work out the way I wanted to. So the next part's a voiceover, guys. So sorry about that. All right, guys, just really quick, I wanted to give you a look of that other tumbler that I did. This is the actual one with the glitter already on it that will be in the next step in the rest of this video. Um, so like I said, I just poured the colors one at a time on top. I didn't mix them up. I let them fall and just do what they wanted. And then I added colors um, directly into the middle of this design. That way it could help them keep flowing. As it did that and those colors reached a little higher, it did help to pull down those colors and tie it all in. There's a few points um, where I did have to stand up top and blow onto that tumbler to help get it to kind of encourage it to lay off the top of the, well, the bottom of the tumbler looking from this angle. But like I had to drop it on top and then blow it down to the side to encourage that to kind of go and drip in. After those colors were dripped on the top, it did kind of combine at the top. Um, and like I said, I like it when it has more of that streaky look. So I went ahead and added a little more throughout the whole tumbler. This whole process right here, is just me finding areas that I wanted a bit more color to and taking that one at a time and really dropping it towards the middle and ends of my tumblers, uh, the tumbler, and to kind of close up those color sections as well as uh, pull any color down that might be stopping dripping, um, stopping dripping, goodness, not dripping from certain areas like it needs to. So that's all that this step is, is just adding the one color at a time directly into sections of your tumbler to give it more of a defined look with each color rather than that kind of muddy look of it all together. So like I said, this part's really easy. You're just adding it in there and um, letting it do its thing. All right, guys, one of the things I definitely will tell you about this part before we um, completely continue on is to make sure this paint dries all the way. You want to let this sit several hours, maybe overnight, depending on um, your climate, where you are, humidity and all that good stuff. But this has to be completely dry before you do this part. So right here, I just have some Mod, po Mod Podge that I put into a little squirt bottle with a needle tip. Um, I got this bottle from one of the Wonderlust packages from Mr. Knowles Glitter. Um, I'm sure they have them everywhere else. I think I may have actually seen them at Mr. Knowles Glitter. And then all craft stores will have this type of thing. But um, I just, like I said, just filled it with Mod Podge. So what I did is I started at the top of one section and I gave it just really um, streaky Mod Podge uh, streaks <laughs> through that. And then I alternated. I went to the bottom of the next part. Um, I really like the way of it looking kind of scratched in where the lines were separated. It didn't quite run together. And it took a little minute, like I'll be honest with you with that. It took a minute to figure out how much pressure to apply to this bottle to make it come out in those nice even, um, you know, even strips. Uh, 
I didn't want them to be even as far as length goes, but as far as how much Mod Podge was being squirted out, I did want that to kind of stay consistent. So I went through and kind of kept the same amount of pressure and really just put streaky parts on it. One thing I'll definitely uh, make sure to point out to you guys is that personal preference here. I just liked the way it looked where it was streaky and then it kind of ran off the tumbler. I didn't um, really love the way it looked when it kind of just stopped in a random line in the middle of the cup unless it continued on off. But that was, like I said, just personal preference for me. Um, and then alternating, like I said, was one of the fun things. I After I got kind of just the top bottom, top bottom all the way around the cup, I went ahead and dropped my glitter on next. With that Mod Podge, um, I found that it was a little tough to see where those lines of Mod Podge were against that white. It really just wanted to blend in. So I went ahead, and after I got that initial section done, I went through and dropped the glitter. The glitter that I'm using here is one of my absolute favorites, guys. It's so pretty. It's called Cordelia from Mr. Nola's Glitter, and it's like a golden opal. Um, it's just gorgeous, and it plays off of all of these colors really nice. I actually liked it a lot better than a straight gold that would have blended in a little more. It just, it looks really pretty. Okay. So then after I got that Mod Podge in those sections um, and the glitter down on those, I went through my tumbler and added where I wanted a little more glitter. Um, I closed in, not quite closed in some of the gaps completely, but kind of added a little more streaks that I thought would play off nice and then made some sections a lot longer than others. This is one of the things that I will definitely tell you is the hardest about this design is that I loved it. It was a lot of fun, but um, showing a little self-control was tough. <laughs> I felt myself definitely being like, okay, stop, walk away, don't overdo it. So um, maybe when you get to a point where you have your glitter down, walk away, take a break, um, and then come back to it a little later and see if you want to add some more. Uh, you, we can always add more to this, but as far as taking the glitter off, there aren't many options here. They do not have a layer of epoxy between this glitter and the paint, so um, you can't exactly go wash it off. It would just wash off those acrylic paints. Um, the most you can do is take, you know, a bristled uh, paintbrush, a dry brush, and kind of uh, sweep off the extra glitter and get into some of those sections that you don't want glitter there. But um, like I said, with that glue there, you'll kind of run the risk of pulling up some of this paint. So just be mindful of that and, uh, and kind of walk away, take a break if you have to. The other thing that I did is I went through with a brush. I let this um, Mod Podge dry for a while, um, several hours. I, don't, I know it wasn't overnight, but definitely several hours. I made sure that Mod Podge was completely dry before I went through and cleaned it. And then I just took um, kind of a chip brush and went fairly aggressive in between all of those streaks of glitter and got out every loose piece of glitter that they had in there part of this design that I really loved was having the gap in the spaces between that glitter and have it show um, how it all plays off. So just a heads up, um, make sure that's brushed out all the way. Also forgot to say this, after this was, um, this was all done and everything was dried out, I went ahead and took clear spray paint and I just gave this a few good coats of clear spray paint to seal it in place. Um, that way nothing shifted around when I was doing epoxy. All right, guys, and this is the end result from that tumbler. Like I said, I just love the way it came out. It was so pretty, so much fun to do. Um, I forgot to video the epoxy and the lid. I can't quite give advice on the lid yet because I'm still learning that. It was um, a bit to work with. But um, it took three layers of epoxy to cover this because some of that glitter was poking a little more. I didn't go lay it down. But like I said, still absolutely love the way it came out. It's just a pretty design. And um, I hope this guys hope this helped you guys. Again, sorry for it being um, mostly voiceover. I uh, wasn't planning on this being a tutorial until um, a few people were like, oh my God, that's amazing. So <laughs> I hope you guys liked it. Again, sorry for the voiceover and I will see y'all soon.